Uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, and I mentioned last week, I, you know, after we finish a chapter, uh, I like to take a little break, do something a little different. Well, I took a break by going back to the same chapter, uh, and as you can see, we didn't finish last week, uh, so, but it just gives us a, a little uh, different perspective, a little uh, different focus, uh, and, um, well, before I go any further, I, I'd like to have a word of prayer again. Uh, Father, um, as we come to this month where right there on our calendars or in our film uh, organizer, we have uh, Thanksgiving, a day set aside to give thanks. And yet, Father, um, we are reminded how that each day is a day of thanksgiving. Each of us has so much to be thankful for, both in those corporate scriptural gifts that each of us has, whether it's strength, whether it's grace, uh, whether it's a, you know, a new life, we have truly been blessed. And Father, each of us also has uh, our own individual challenges and circumstances. And so, Father, we can look back in, in our lives and see provision. We can see times where maybe you withheld because we needed a lesson to learn. We've seen times that we only got through something through your strength. Or times when we got so busy and yet you uh, caused us to, to stop and remember that we're really here for you. So, yes, Father, we have a lot to be thankful for. And from, from last week's uh, sermon to, to this week's sermon, it's a little more technical and, and uh, academic and all of those things. And yet, Father, the fact is, is that we should be thankful for the fact that your grace is reigning today. And uh, Father, I just pray that each of us understand the, the implications of that, uh, truly how blessed we are to be sitting here today or... Uh, to be here today serving under your grace. I pray all of these things with much thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as you can see up here on the board, maybe, uh, last week we, we did a lot of laying the groundwork, which is why this turned into two, two uh, sermons. Uh, but we talked about uh, what a dispensation is, and, and just so that uh, everybody was on the same page. Uh, the word points to an, uh, an administrating a program. Uh, this is the, these are the rules, and this is how what must be followed. This is how it uh, needs to be done. I also remind you that God Himself does not change. Uh, God, uh, unlike us, where we need to grow, um, and we need to, to add things, uh, we need to stop things. Uh, God has been perfect from all, for all eternity. Uh, he has not had to, to change his very essence. Uh, I guess you could say the only thing that, that changed about him is when God the Son took on, on flesh, but that's another subject for another day. Uh, but God's character and very essence have not changed. Uh, he has never had to, to uh, mature. Uh, however, God's dealings with mankind have changed. Uh, his, the way his requirements uh, his word to people, his instructions, all of that have changed through times. And we would call that, well, God does not change. His dispensations have changed. Uh, and that's why we call ourselves dispensationalists. Uh, because we recognize, uh, in using the example that I, um, uh, that I the, the obvious example I used last week. God has not asked us today. Part of our responsibility today is not rid of all the double negatives. Part of your rules today, your rules today do not include, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You don't even have that opportunity. Um, and so, but that was part of what, of Adam's responsibility to God. And so obviously when they were cut out of the garden, something changed. Uh, and even more obviously, now that sin and death uh, were, were in God's creation with Adam's disobedience, that necessitated a change. Uh, God does not change uh, his, his dealings frivolously. 
doesn't change it because he's bored, uh, but really because through all of these uh, administrations, uh, through all of these programs, mankind, we fail. Uh, and because God is, is gracious, uh, he wants a, a permanent solution, and he has done everything he can to, to do it for us. I mean, he, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but um, don't blame God for, for switching me. Uh, he even those uh, in some ways became a necessity uh, because, well, uh, familiar uh, families weren't being accountable. So human government or, um, or you know, the nations rebelled against him. So he created his own nation, etc., etc. But we did get as far as the dispensation of the patriarchs. Romans 5.14, it says this. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, uh, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. It says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. I also explained last week, in case you didn't watch it or in case you weren't here, uh, there are, there are uh, differences of opinion of how many dispensations there are, and, and it's not always as cut and dry as we like it. Uh, you know, when, when uh, for instance, uh, most people say there's a dispensation of conscience, then a dispensation of human government. Well, conscience didn't just go away when in, uh, human government were, was instituted. Uh, we talk about a dispensation of the law, but the scriptures tell us the law was added to promise. Uh, so it's not always cut and dry as, as we would like, but because I'm focusing on Romans 5, there are four obvious, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Four obvious categories. Uh, category. Yeah, that's a good word. Thank you. Uh, four obvious categories uh, here in Romans chapter 5. And the first one is the dispensation of the patriarchs. And it says from Adam to, um, I didn't even write Moses on here, but uh, that's because I put him over here because, anyway. Uh, from Adam to Moses, during all of that time, death reigned. Uh, we went through and I, I showed you different, I used uh, scripture uh, to show you different ways death did indeed reign. I took you back to the beginning where God warned Adam, if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I showed you that uh, when, when Adam uh, and Eve sinned, yes, their eyes were open, and then we, we saw that, guess what? The animals had to die. Those, fig those uh, leaves were not proper coverings. Uh, blood needed to be shed uh, and, uh, and a sacrifice. Death uh, was, was the consequence. Uh, even under government, uh, part of the instructions were if a man kills another, that man, death is, is, the, uh, is the sentence. Uh, we, we talked about the covenant, and God ratified the covenant, or he entered into that covenant with Abraham by splitting animals in half. And I also remind you, when you split animals in half, they, they're dead. Uh, so death ratified that covenant. Uh, and also uh, we went through Genesis 5, yes. And we, so, and we saw, and this guy begat this guy, and begat this guy, begat this guy, and he lived for this many years, and died. And all throughout that thing, and died, and died, and died. We did run into Enoch, uh, who, and he wasn't, uh, but he's the uh, the outlier. Um, so from this, from all this period, uh, death reigned. So let's uh, let's move on to the next uh, category here in in uh, Romans chapter five, and uh, look down at verse twenty, Romans five twenty. In just the first part, uh, it says, Moreover, the law entered that grace, or I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Moreover, the law entered that the offense uh, might abound. The law entered so that grace uh, may. Uh, offense. Yeah, I'm sorry. Offense. That's a very different thing. Uh, and so I'm just going to use the word sin. Uh, so here we have the dispensation of the law and, and sin reign. Because when, uh, as Paul's going to go on and say uh, in chapter 7 of Romans, uh, I would have known covetousness except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. Uh, so, what the law did is it, it um, I don't want to say awoke sinfulness, but it, uh, it uh, appealed to the flesh. It kind of got in the flesh, and the flesh just wouldn't let it go. Yeah, I know you're not supposed to covet it, but man, wouldn't you really like to have 
what so-and-so had. Uh, and so that's the next uh, thing, is that the law entered, so, uh, so the offense may abound. Uh, and I guess I should write this, Romans 5, 20a. Um, and so what a few of the people here is obviously it, Moses was given the law, and Joshua, and Daniel, and Isaiah, and David, and Ezra, and Nehemiah, and etc., etc., etc. Jesus Christ uh, was one born under the law, um, and uh, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna turn to a lot of verses here. So just I mean, if you get thumb cramps, just start doing your exercises now. Warm them up. Do your little uh, you know twirly things um, because we're I'm one after another. We're gonna go there. Uh, but what we see in in all of this time this this period is we see law keep the commandments. You keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments. And we see even in the New Testament, uh, we see Jesus going to be uh, uh, circumcised on a certain day. Why? Well, because they were keeping the commandments. Um, and, but we also see disobedience, failure, failure, transgression uh, during all of this time. Uh, so let's, let's look at uh, this time uh, in, in when, God, when sin reigned. Turn back, mm, let's see, let me do it a different way. How many would like to be famous and help me out to read a verse? You're not going to be famous. Uh, how many people don't mind reading a verse? Okay, wow man, we got too many. Alright, let's start over here. Who raised their hand? Okay, you too. Um, I'll give you, since you're a married couple, I'll give you one from the same book. Uh, Scott, you want to read Jeremiah 9, 13, and Christine, Jeremiah 44, 10. All right, who else? Okay, uh, Carl, how about Acts 7? 53. You want to? I will. You both will? All right, let's see. Well, you're going to have to be divided because I don't have two in the same book. So, uh, do you want to read Psalm 78.10? And you can read Nehemiah 9.16. Nehemiah 9.16. And Psalm oh, 78.10. Anybody else on the side? Uh, Micah, Amos, 2, 4. Is it Micah or Amos? No, Amos. You. You, Amos, 2, 4. You, ready? Habakkuk, 1, 4. Swords up. Every time I, every time I, uh, every time in, in uh, Kids for Christ, whenever I have the, the kids do it, uh, do, uh, when I do something, they ask, can we have a sword drill? Um, that somehow makes it more exciting. So, uh, Amos 2-4, two, 2-4, four, two, four. Psalm 119-126. All right, anybody else? I don't want to leave anybody out. We have two more. All right, I can read the last one. Okay, so what, what these, just pay attention. Uh, when you read, read as, as loud as you can. Um, pay attention because what we're going to see is the law is there, disobedience, disobedience, uh, sin reign. Um, we're going to see time and time again. I tried to pick different eras and different types of books. So you see, this wasn't just one, one generation of this, uh, of this nation. Uh, it, was, uh, it began when the law was still given. As they said, we're bored, make us a, a, a golden calf to... Uh, to um, to worship, uh, it began right there when it was the law was still being given. Uh, it continued that whole generation. Oh man, we should go back to Egypt. Why'd you bring us out here? We're hungry. Um, and I love, I love. I think it was with the. Uh, I don't think it was with the manna. I think it was when they God gave after God gave them manna, and they complained again. We're tired of this manna stuff. How you can get tired of bread from heaven, I don't know, but um, but. <laughs> And then said that we want some meat. 
And then it t says that, uh, what's, what's the word the King James uses? Was it pheasants or fowl? Anyway, he sent them so many, uh, so much poultry to eat, and he said, I'm going to send you so much poultry, it's going to be coming out your nose. Uh, and uh, God said, you want poultry, I'll give you poultry. Anyway, that's has nothing to do with this, it's just, I like it. Uh, all right, so sin reigned during this time. Uh, how about Jeremiah, oh, are yours? Uh, Habakkuk 1, 4, chapter 1, verse 4. Uh, so just, again, just listen. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 13. And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. Yes, and there's going to be, obviously, more context to it. But the main thing is, they had the law, they didn't walk according to it. Uh, go ahead and read the other one in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 44, 10. Yes, and that's quite, I mean, that's quite a statement, because what he's saying, a lot of generations have passed, a lot of time has passed, and what, is, what the Lord is, is saying there is, I gave it to their fathers, but they haven't kept it even to this day. All these generations, all this time passed, and all I've seen is sin uh, and disobedience. Um, Acts 7.53. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Yes, uh, and that's very blunt. Um, uh, saying they, they received the law, but they didn't keep it. Um, very blunt and uh, statement. Uh, Psalm 78.10 They did not keep the covenant of God. They refused to walk in his law. Yep, so even the psalmist, you know, he didn't keep his religion out of his poetry uh, or his uh, psalming. Uh, he said there, they, God gave it to him, they didn't keep it. Uh, Nehemiah 9.16 they and our fathers dealt proudly and hardened their necks, and heart, hearken not to thy commandments. Yep, they, instead of uh, being, having their hearts prepared, the opposite happened. Their hearts hardened towards it, and it says there, they didn't keep the commandments. Uh, and that is uh, when, that is after uh, God had already judged the nation. Um, and now they're back in the land, and, and Nehemiah, there's, a, there's another verse in Nehemiah there, uh, I think it's in the same speech, that says something very similar. Uh, Nehemiah is reminding them, look, the Lord has graced us to allow this remnant to come back to the land. Uh, let's remember the failure of our, of our fathers. They did not keep the law, instead, sin reigned. Uh, what's the next one that I have written down here? Amos 2.4. Yes, so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's calling out a certain part of the nation, uh, and uh, the Lord's saying, look, you, uh, you disobeyed, uh, sin reigned, and because you did, judgment's coming. All right, how about Habakkuk, or Habakkuk 1-4? So uh, the law isn't powerless. The law is only powerless because they, they disobeyed. They wouldn't, they wouldn't adhere to it. Uh, and instead of righteousness reigning, uh, sin was reigning. The wicked surround. Uh, and because of that, um, Habakkuk is a, very, is a very emotional book. It's a very personal book. Uh, because of that, the Lord's going to judge the nation, as we learn in that book. Psalm 119, 126. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. They have made void by law. Yep. Now, uh, Israel couldn't officially void the law, 
But what that's saying is, Lord, it's time for you to, to, to judge them because they've made their your law meaningless. Listen, you can have all sorts of laws, but whenever you don't hold people to the laws, uh, what good is the laws? Um, and so that's what the people were doing. They were not uh, adhering to the law. Uh, and so because sin was reigning, transgression was reigning, uh, the Lord needed to judge. Uh, a couple more. Daniel chapter 9 verse 5 says this. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. So what Daniel do, is doing here is he's doing what they were told to do in 2 Chronicles, uh, confess your sins, uh, and, and the Lord will be just to forgive you of your sins. He's doing what later on, 1 John 1, 9 said, is Daniel is confessing the national sins of Israel. He's saying, we have sinned to sin. We have allowed sin to reign instead of allowing the law of righteousness to reign. We've uh, gone against your law. Uh, and also, one more, Hosea 8, 14. It says this, For Israel hath forgotten his maker, and buildeth temples, and Judah hath multiplied fenced cities. But I will send a fire upon his cities, and it shall devour the palaces thereof. Listen, God is a righteous God. He gave his nation a law so that they could remain uh, in a covenant with, with him. Uh, he ratified that covenant through death, or the promise, at least, through death. We saw that. Um, but what happened instead of righteousness reigning uh, during this time is sin reigned. And here he, in, in Hosea, the one I just read, uh, Hosea 8.14, um, Israel, whether it was Israel or whether it was Judah, uh, both of those parts of those kingdoms, they went away from God. They allowed sin and transgression and iniquity to reign rather than allowing law reign or, or righteousness uh, to reign. Uh, and so while these people should have been judged by the administration of the law, uh, instead sin reigned. Transgression became abundant. Um, and we've already talked about that as we were in Romans chapter 5, uh, kind of the difference between sin and transgression. Uh, but, but the law made sin into a transgression. They were directly disobeying God's in writing uh, words. Um, and so what a, sad, what a sad state of affairs. Yes, death reigned. Uh, you know, death is not our friend. Well, I shouldn't say that. As Christians, uh, uh, we, we uh, well, death still isn't our friend. It just has no hold over us. We are victorious over it. Uh, death is not going to be in his creation one day. So yeah, death is not our friend. Yeah. But also sin uh, is obviously not uh, a friend of God. Um, and so during this whole period, sin reigned. Look, uh, when, when separation from God and sin reigned, I don't, I don't mean to keep reiterating, but if I, or probably you were God, uh, what we would have done... Uh, What these people deserve is to be eternally separated from God due to their transgressions, due to their sins, in a lake of fire. That's what they deserve. Um, and if God was this cold-hearted God uh, that wasn't a God of mercy, uh, that if God was uh, just some egotistical divine being, uh, we, would be, we would be in trouble. Uh, these people would be in trouble uh, because through all of these decades, all of these years, all of these eras, uh, we as, as human beings have proved we do not deserve to be with God. Why God put up with them under the law for so long is only because he is a merciful God. Uh, I'm telling you, Israel was a nation of stinkers. Uh, I mean, man, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah, they had their, their, their decent times. Uh, Hezekiah, uh, David. Uh, but, um, man, what an ungrateful nation. Uh, and then I have to ask myself, you know, we don't have any inspired scriptures 
in today's uh, dispensation of grace, I wonder what the Lord would be saying about the body of Christ. How proud he would be of us sometimes. Um, and I think, uh, I think uh, we have glimpses into it in verses such as Corinthians, um, or, or books such as Corinthians, uh, etc. But, um, but Israel, we can go back and we can learn lessons from. Look, this is not, uh, disobeying God's, the way God's working is not the best of intentions. Um, or is not the best, it's not the best way to, to go about things. Uh, but we need to be very careful. We don't say, oh, those Israelites. Oh, man. Uh, we need to be thankful God showed mercy to Israel. And we need to be thankful that he continues to show grace to us. Uh, let's look at uh, now the, the dispensation of, uh, of what I'm going to call grace. Uh, Romans. Oh, man, I'm going to get out of Hosea now. Romans chapter 5 again. You probably know where I'm going since I kept saying under law grace reigns. Which, yeah, anyway. No, I can't find Romans. Uh, Romans 5 verse 20. The second part of that verse says this. But where sin abounded, grace did much more uh, abound. And then it goes on and says that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so grace might reign through righteousness. Uh, Today, we have grace. You know, we talk about Thanksgiving. Uh, this is, and I'll say this is, this is where all of our Thanksgiving stems from, really. The fact, the, the fact of the matter is, is that grace reigns. Um, the law was never, 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 never the eternal solution. Never. That's what Hebrews explains. If this would have been able to make people perfect, there wouldn't be need for another. Uh, but because, it, because uh, well, mankind failed, God instead has this new covenant under uh, the redemption in, in Jesus Christ. But, oh man, I gotta, and I'm, I'm saying this respectfully, but I also want to say it bluntly so we all understand. Uh, I think these two verses I just read in John, John 1, 14, John 1, 17, I think because um, people think that grace is just uh, something that only is displayed during the mystery period, they come to John and see full of grace and truth and say, oh, this is to, to members of the body of Christ. The Gospel of John is not written to members of the body of Christ. And it's okay that it says Jesus Christ, the law came by Moses, grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not have to bring the law. Why? It was already here. It was already here. And he was bound to it. And guess what? Under the law, um, if there would not have been a forever sacrifice to atone for, to, not atone, to reconcile all those sins atoned for under the law, uh, well, I'll use Paul's words and say, those people are, are of all men most miserable. Uh, because without the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we, they are yet in their sins. So please do not see the word grace and think, oh, John, you know, apply it to, to, when, uh, to this age of grace. It's okay that God has enough grace to go around. And on the cross, God was showing his grace and truth for uh, all in the past dispensations and uh, all the dispensations to come, including this one that used to be secret, in which we live now. Uh, yeah, so I have written here uh, for me to remember that I already said, the grace of God was seen on the cross. Um, and that is true, but while what I'm making a distinction between is grace reigning uh, and, uh, and what, is, what, is, what is really Paul saying in Romans 5.14? Uh, because for the tribulation saints, um, grace ain't going to be reigning during that time. And I realize it's not proper grammar. Uh, but... Uh, Turn to 1 Peter 1. Let's just go there. 1 Peter 1. Seriously. 1 Peter, there it is. 
1, verse 10. So it's of which salvation the prophets have inquired and, dil and searched diligently, he prophesied of the grace that should come to you. Man, if we don't allow for God's grace through any dispensation, we're going to have some problems here. Because here it's talking about a grace that was prophesied. Wait a minute, doesn't Paul say, uh, we, we talk about the mystery, grace uh, being unprophesied. It's okay that God graces other people other than, than us. Uh, the fact that what Peter is talking about here, that, that future kingdom of righteousness, those people did not deserve it. Listen, death reign, sin reign, are those the deserving people? It, they're not. And so God it, it, it brought, brought God paid for redemption on the cross, uh, and through that he is going to grace them by finally giving to a nation what they don't deserve. Uh, and, and allow righteousness to reign. We're going to get there in a moment. Uh, here's the context of 1 Peter 1.10. Uh, verse 5 uh, says, Who are kept by the power of God through, through faith and the salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are you waiting for your salvation to occur in the last times? Uh, you are not. Verse 7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or are we living our lives so that when Jesus Christ appears, and, and the appearing here, and, and as we see in the, the book context is, here on earth, is that God's going to say, well done, come on in. Uh... The rest of the context, verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Has your faith started and has to be perfected until your soul is saved? No. Uh, verse uh, 11 says, oh, I, no, I didn't read that. Searching what or what manner time the Spirit of Christ, which is in them, did signify when it was testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory uh, that should follow. Let me just say this: all of those answers, all of those uh, questions you answered no to when I said, "Are you still waiting for the end of your the salvation of your soul?" You said no. Uh, are you waiting for your faith to be perfected so that you can receive? No. Uh, listen, if this book was written to you, if Peter wrote to you directly, you just lied. Uh, and so what I'm saying is Peter is writing to people under a, under a different dispensation uh, where grace is not reigning. However, God's grace has been provided for and God's grace is being displayed. Uh, and so those are, that's a distinction I'm going to, to make uh, for you today. Just so that you don't run into these verses and say, oh no, grace, grace must be reigning. The difference between grace reigning and being what God is, is doing uh, versus um, grace being offered uh, and grace being displayed uh, and, and ratified. Uh, so while you could say that Peter was offering the grace provided by God at Pentecost, uh, it was not reigning. So what is Paul talking about? Uh, turn to Ephesians 3, if you will, uh, in a very familiar passage to all of us, one we embrace. Um, but maybe this, people that might watch this later, in Genesis, it is still recording, right? Okay, good. You get a lollipop when we get home. <laughs> Alright, so Ephesians 3. Uh, once again, after I sent my son... The very nation he was sent to save uh, stood there and cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Um, I personally, again, if I'm God, and you're very lucky I'm not, uh, I would say, look, you guys blew it. Uh, uh, here, you wanted, my, you wanted my wrath, here it is. All right? Uh, instead, what he did is he allow, is allowing, he dispensed his grace began to rule according to his grace, and today grace reigns. Yeah, where, where sin uh, abounded, grace abounded much, much more. 
So you can throw all the sin of God you want, and his grace is much more than that. You tell me what, just your sins. I mean, that's a pretty big pile. Um, you add mine to it, and it's a little bit bigger. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I mean, you talk about all the sins of the world, and God's grace isn't just more than it. It's much, much, much more. Uh, and I'll tell you, grace abounds. That, that's something uh, we need to get excited about. Anyway, Ephesians 3, 1 and 2, it says, For this reason... I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, for you nations, if you have heard of the dispensation, remember this word, we talked about it, of the grace of God which is given to me for you, or toward you, so that you can give it to others. Verse 5, which in other ages was not made, kn was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Uh, uh, at the beginning of the age of grace, or the dispensation of grace, apostles and prophets were still necessary, uh, because guess what? There was no grace scripture. Uh, you know, uh, Paul could not say, okay, turn your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, before he wrote Colossians chapter 3. And actually, they didn't have chapters, but that's another. Um, uh, and so, they had these apostles and, and prophets that would, were, I guess the simplest way to put it, were apostles and prophets of grace. Um, but was not made known in other ages. That goes against uh, what we read, I believe, in 1 Peter 1.10 that says, of the grace that has been prophesied to you. But Paul is saying, this is a grace that is not prophesied. And it was given to me toward you. Uh, because God's grace is reigning. Instead of God pouring out his wrath on, on sin so that he could bring his righteousness uh, he instead said, wait a minute, I have something I've never told anyone before. But I'm now going to tell you, Paul, uh, the chief of sinners. Uh, and, he, and, 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 Paul, and Saul was, was chosen, and Paul was, was chosen to then go out and, and tell people, uh, grace is reigning. Let me tell you about the grace of God uh, through Jesus Christ. Look, uh, if anything should convince us of our unworthiness, and yet the superabounding grace of God, uh, it's this. The grace reigns. This. The grace reigns. Not that God hasn't been gracious to Noah. Not that God uh, will be gracious to Peter and, and the other ones. But the fact that instead of just his grace, he said, no, I'm gonna, grace is going to reign. Sin is powerful, but I'm much more. My grace is much more. And the last one we're going to cover quickly. Uh, turn to Isaiah 32, verse 1. I realize that's not in Romans 5, but you're going to have to work this out in your own head. Isaiah 32. I just chose verse 1. Um, there is coming a day, the church is wrapped away. God is going to, uh, God is going to get back to dealing with sin and death because he can't just let it happen. Uh, he has to, uh, uh, I mean, to be a, a, uh, a gracious God, he has, to, he has to deal with it permanently and forever. Um, that's a one. I don't know two. Anyway. Uh, uh, but, um, but there is coming a day he's going to keep his promise. Uh, he's going to, to rid the world of what happened back here. Uh, he, is, he is going to finally defeat and cast out uh, the sin. Uh, and what is going to happen is he's going to bring his promised kingdom, and righteousness will reign throughout all eternity. Um, sometimes when we're on the other side, when our, we're on the wrong side of things, uh, we may not want righteousness to reign as much then. Uh, but the only thing that's really going to truly make bring the world back to where it should be is when righteousness reigns. God's going to come and he's going to say, look, sin and death is gone. This is the way the world should have always been. This is where I created it uh, to be uh, when he deals with sin and death uh, and he keeps what he had prophesied uh, for centuries. 
Isaiah 32, verse 1 says, Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule, shall rule in judgment. And you can go read the context later. Uh, what a gracious God. Paul goes through all of these things, and really he only talks about these things, so he, this can be impressed upon you all the more. The grace reigns. And because of this, we can go into Romans 6, we can go into Romans 7, we can go into Romans 8, that we can see, look, this isn't reigning anymore. This is. This isn't reigning anymore. This is. So don't live as if you're under this, or you're under this. Because you have been set free and made new because God is a gracious God. But we'll start that next week. For now, let's pray. Now, God, Father, thank you uh, for these reminders. Yes, it is important to go to the Word and, and study it, to allow it to say what it says. And, Father, it's also important to recognize the different ways that you have been working uh, throughout history so that we aren't confused. And, Father, When we understand these things, it makes us even more impressed and thankful that today you have decided, against all reasoning, against all logic, you have decided to instead rule in grace. And Father, may we, uh, as we go through these next several weeks and, and look at the book of Romans, may we constantly see this is why. Uh, we can live and serve uh, in Christ Jesus because grace is reigning and grace superabounds. And Father, as I, I pray every week, if there's one here who is, is trusting in works or keeping the law or whatever it is, Father, may they see that with grace reigning, it's faith alone in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And Father, if, that even we who have done that, recently or many years ago, may we never tire of hearing about your grace reigning today. I pray all these things in the name of the one full of grace and truth, Jesus Christ. Amen.